Welcome to this week in the world of wrestling. Welcome to Twit Wow, the best wrestling podcast made for wrestling fans by wrestling fans on the web today. I'm John. That's my cohort and commentary, Ashton. And this is our NXT review. And I gotta say, guys, a very fun episode of NXT. Got a great women's match in Bailey versus Alexa Bliss. Got some great promotion for Shinsuke Nakamura versus Finn Bauer next week. And the tag team two out of three falls match between the Revival and American Alpha, well, exceptional, doesn't even begin to do it justice. Can't wait to give my full thoughts on that match. But until then, partner, what do you think of tonight's episode of NXT? Oh, yeah. This was one of the best episodes of NXT that we've seen in a while. And I could even make the argument that this is the best episode of NXT of 2016 so far. Absolutely. I think they really came out guns blazing. And, you know, between this episode and the one that I'm at least presuming we're going to get in quality next week, you have to believe that NXT is fully aware of Lucha Underground and putting its best foot forward, uh, given that Ultima Lucha Dose is airing. We got part one tonight, guys, if you haven't heard the live reactions, Titwow, or our formal review, all of that is on the channel for you to check out. But, yeah, NXT stepped their game up in a major way tonight. And, yeah, I just can't wait to talk about this show, dude. Yeah, I'm, I'm looking forward to it as well. You want to get right into it? Let's get right into it. Heat of the night. And we're going to be fair. I do have one nitpick. And it okay. was one that you addressed last week. So I just feel in the name of consistency, we got to bring it up again. Uh, commercials during matches. Just very badly timed commercials. Uh, I do feel like it hurt the uh, Bailey Alexa Bliss match a little bit. Uh, commercials happened during two out of three falls, but you know what? I was more forgiving of that, seeing as how it was a much lengthier match given the format. Right, but, yeah. and from what I understand, didn't the commercials only happen right after the falls? Um, no. No, I don't think they did, because the falls happened in pretty quick succession, because remember, there was a long time in the match that there weren't any falls. Yeah. So, yeah, I mean, I just gotta be consistent with what you addressed last week. You know, again, we look at the Lucha Underground format, dude. They even had a commercial before Cueto's explanation of the briefcase. Like, I would have been fine if they cut it where he explained it. It's like, oh, what's Epic going to choose? We'll be right back. But no, they let you see everything, dude. And NXT only being an hour show in its own right could adopt that format very easily. I don't know why they haven't uh, opted to. So, yeah, that's my only nitpick. Otherwise, though, really loved what this show did. So, partner, do you have any Heats of the Night or nitpicks? I have a nitpick, but it is relatively minor. Okay. I'm not a big fan of Bailey going full Cena to win her match. You know, you were telling me this in conversation, and I can totally get where you're coming from. So just kind of expound upon that a little bit. What are, what are you thinking here? Well, this Bailey versus Alexa Bliss match felt like John Cena versus The Miz in that random I Quit match where, he, where Miz and Alex Riley were beating down John Cena for the entire match. And then in the last two minutes, Cena hits one AA and locks in an STF and Miz quits. Yeah, that match was so bad. That's what so this bad. felt like to me. Alexa Bliss dominated Bailey for pretty much the entire match. And then Bailey gets her shit in and wins with a Bailey to belly. And it was a single Bailey to belly at that. I got to ask you, bro, while we're on the subject of this match, and I, I know it's not the formal review, but I got to ask you, was I the only one rooting for Alexa Bliss at a certain point? Because I really liked what she was doing in there, and I kind of wanted her to get the win. I knew it wasn't going to happen. Yeah, I, I kind of I, I think that this is one of those matches where I wasn't really able to suspend my disbelief enough to even be able to get behind Alexa because I just knew Bailey was winning. And you know what? Given your nitpick, that makes perfect sense. Yeah. So I'm really glad you addressed that. Is there anything else you want to say on the subject? That is my biggest problem with this whole show. Other than that, I thought it was a great show. Absolutely, dude. We got so much great stuff to talk about. So let's get right into our NXT review. And oddly enough, I do believe we open up straight with the women's match. Alexa Bliss versus Bailey, if I'm not mistaken. Yep. Um. Yeah, not really much more to add from what we said in our preceding remarks. I just love the way Alexa worked this match. I love that she's really developing, even though I know I shouldn't because she's a heel. She really is developing a fan following, 
because the Alexa Bliss supporters were quite vocal. In fact, I even thought there were points where they were dead even with the Bailey supporters, which really surprised me. But kudos to Alexa. Her heel work, there did come, especially towards the end of the match, where it just seemed like full Bailey support. Uh, I, I think the highlight for uh, Alexa, too, was that sunset flip kind of power bomb she did, that kind of Yoshi tonic of sorts. That was really well done. And uh, insult to injury, great move. And yeah, Bailey's comeback. See, it's funny because I know every babyface has a comeback, but I think you got to structure it a little better. It really didn't feel that organic to me. It just felt like, you know, almost like Popeye. Uh, eating the spinach, and then you just kind of, you know, pump up, you get in the game, and then you win. Yep. Uh, I would I would have liked a bit more back and forth. Um, but is there anything you wanted to say about it outside of what you've already said? No, I think, I think I've about covered it. Uh, you know, just the idea that, like, we all knew Bailey was going to win, and their idea of trying to get us to suspend our disbelief for that was just to have Alexa Tomini the whole match, which is very much a paint-by-numbers thing that we've seen before, and it doesn't work anymore. And, you know, that's the thing. I think now that NXT must clearly see that Alexa has developed this fanfare, and more than that, I think this credibility in the eyes of the people. I'm not asking them to turn her face. I never want to see face Alexa uh, Bliss again because I'm just loving her heel work. You know, have her be in more competitive bouts. You know, give her those spots. So I really hope they do. But then Bailey gets a microphone, starts talking about how she's back, you know, and then she actually mentions Nia Jax or goes to mention Nia Jax. And Nia's music hits. So she cuts Bailey off at the pass. They get in the ring. And pretty much, Ashton, what results is these two women mutually agreeing one more time. Bailey versus Jax, you know, three, the third matchup, the rubber match. Yeah, so. and, and honestly, I wasn't really a big fan of the way that this segment went down either. And it's not just because, you know, we're going to get this match again, which is admittedly a little bit on the disappointing side. But what disappointed me most about this was that, like, Nia is this heartless murdering killer person and she gets all up in Bailey's face and they agree to have another match and then she just leaves. Yeah. See, Naya isn't the type of character cause I could have been forgiving of this and even supportive of it. If Naya was the type of character that was so like confident in a way in her ability that she's just like with my raw power, my domination, I can have you like that anytime I want. I don't have to take you right now. I can take you next week. Just fine. But Nia's never come off as that kind of character to me. Yes, she's yeah. dominant. I guess it just it feels like they haven't worked hard enough to make that a believable thing. Right. In in fact, if anything, if I can like vocalize my own disappointments about, you know, specifically Nia for a second, because I agree with you about the program, I'm kinda over it. In fact, I'm really if I'm being really truthful, I'm in the same place with Bailey that I was with Finn. I'm just kinda tired of Bailey and NXT in general. I wanna see her on the main roster already. Uh but with Nia how can I put this delicately? Well, I guess I can. Uh, it just seems a little one-dimensional to me, just everything. There's not really much of a character there besides, oh, look, I'm this imposing figure, fear me. You know, I'd, I'd like a little bit more depth in the future. I doubt we'll get it, but, I mean, you never know. But, yeah, just like she just walks off amicably, like, oh, okay, Bailey, I'll leave this ring to you. Um, Why? You bragged about how you, you know, you broke Bailey. You broke the soul of NXT, and then you're just going to leave the ring to her when you realize that she's back on turf that you thought you claimed? Just seems very backwards to me. Yeah. All right, anything else you want to say about this? No, nah, man. That's you, you know my opinion now, so. Absolutely. So what came after this, bro? After the match and the confrontation, we had a TM61 vignette where, as I mentioned on Titwow, they said something about how they are the mighty and the mighty don't kneel, which immediately has me excited. So, yeah, I was even going to ask you, like, what? because uh, we, we've we seen them for a while now, and I think you've even had experience with them as the mighty don't kneel. In fact, we both may have, but I honestly... Yeah, we, we, yeah they, they, were at, uh, they wrestled at Wrestle Kingdom 9 last year. That's right, that's right. So do you think these guys have done well in NXT? Are you happy with how they've been utilized? Like So far, I think that they've been utilized fairly well. I don't think that they were ever really going to be like that American Alpha, oh my god, I can't wait to see their next match kind of team in NXT. Right. But I think that so far they have been made legitimate. I mean, they've been built pretty well, if you ask me. Uh, you know what? I have to agree with you. I just wanted your thoughts there because I, I know we both have experience with them, and I think they're very likable guys. Like, I want them to succeed. You know, I want them to do everything. So, yeah, I'd agree with you. It hasn't been, like, 
pedal to the metal, but honestly, not every push has to be that way. And I'm actually glad that they're just really kind of taking it slow with this because I think the development will feel more authentic that way. And so, yeah, I'm very excited for TM61. So what came after this? Uh, we had a uh, Kathy Kelly interview with the Revival and kind of what you'd expect from the Revival. They're confident that they're going to be winning tonight. Clank me, Jack. I fucking love it. <laughs> it's so good. Yeah, just saying, like, once again, we're going to prove that we are the best tag team in the world. I'm telling you, I don't think I even said this on a past tweet. Wow. What I love about Scott Dawson in particular, like, when he talks, it reminds me of that kind of breed of wrestler, like the Harley Races, for instance. Yeah. Because when you hear him speak about those tag titles, you think – that that is everything. That's why I love the character work of guys like Kevin Owens and Dean Ambrose when it revolved around the Intercontinental title. Because the way those guys spoke about it, just it was like it was everything. It's like the world title wasn't even a thing. This was the ultimate prize. Yeah. And that's how Scott Dawson, to me, really conveys the prestige of the NXT tag titles. And I will say this. I mean, kind of getting into my uh, giddiness about the main event a little early. I'd say this American Alpha and the Revival feud the NXT tag team titles have never been more prestigious to me. I, I, I feel like they're on an all-time high right now, and the Revival just make them seem like the biggest deal, and I will love them forever for that. Yeah. Great stuff. Yeah, man. These guys have great confidence. They're, uh, they're pretty legit, man. Well, you know, they, they celebrate the idea that they're throwbacks, and you definitely get that vibe. And it, it just it works, man, because how's the saying go? What's old is new again. And, you know, they've definitely got an old vibe about them. But that's what makes them so fresh. It's weird, but it's fucking beautiful, and I ain't going to ask questions. So um, what came after this? Yeah, man. Uh, up next, we had our second match of the night, or I guess what was supposed to be our second match of the night, Blake and Murphy versus the Hype Bros. And this doesn't really last too long. This is maybe like a minute and a half, and it breaks down into – I think both teams were arguing, weren't they? Well, no, just Blake and Murphy, and then Mojo oh. tried cutting in, and they both told him to shut up, which was glorious. Yeah. I feel like they were speaking for the human population there. And then, <laughs> no kidding. And then we get a very surprising interruption. And uh, it's it's almost like the violent version of mind if I cut in, as in, do you mind if I cut you in half with my gore? Because Rhino emerges and he gores everybody except Buddy Murphy. And it's at this point now that I'm going to field it over to my cohort in commentary. I know you think the world of Buddy Murphy and I think we, we've we agreed that Rhino is in a good place in NXT. It's like that kind of veteran hand to enhance yeah. the younger talent. Yep. So what do you think about this program? What do you think about Buddy Murphy's you know, plays in this program as a, an opponent for Rhino? Just give me your thoughts in general about everything. Yeah, I, I absolutely love this. Like, here's the thing. I actually I, – I knew about this. I knew that Rhino was going to show up and just destroy this match, but I was pissed off about it because it was just like, wow, they're – they're really bringing back Rhino just to kind of give him a little bit of a push and maybe have him go after the NXT title and stuff like that. But nowhere in the spoilers that I was, you know, shown, did it say anything about Murphy being kind of highlighted and being the only person not to get scored. Right, right. So that's like that's a huge difference because I'm a massive fan of Murphy and I, I, I see a future main event kind of guy in him. And I, I just really am excited now at the prospect of him, even if he doesn't necessarily win every match, but the idea of him feuding at all with somebody that I think I'm not stretching too much when I call him a legend like Rhino. Right. Definitely. Yeah, definitely. I, I think this is very smart. I agree with everything you just said. I don't even know if it's just going to be one match or a series of matches, because here's the thing. If Rhino would win the first match, which I hope not, but I, I could see it happening because I think they want to tell the story of Buddy Murphy finding his legs as a yeah. singles competitor. Yep. So I would really hope for a series of matches. But honestly, Rhino, because if, if you're going to set the table for Buddy Murphy, Ty Dillinger has already been done for so many guys and this and that. I, I'm glad that they're making a distinction with Murphy by giving him Rhino instead because that immediately sets him apart from the guys like Oni Lorcan and Andrade Cien Almas. And it's like, oh, I'm this huge deal because, you know, when I first found my legs as a singles competitor, I beat a former ECW champion. Right. You know, that that's huge to me. 
And I'm really happy for Buddy Murphy. I'm happy for you being happy for Buddy Murphy because I know what a huge fan you are of him. Yeah. And I can't wait to see where this goes. And I'm actually surprised at myself for using that kind of verbiage. But no, I'm definitely invested in the storyline. It's only just gotten started. Exactly. Yeah. So I'm, I'm really excited about the prospect of Murphy getting a singles push. It's something that I've been calling for probably close to two years now. Yeah. Yeah. You're finally getting your payday. How's that feel? It's pretty sweet. I got to say, it's pretty sweet. Hell yeah, brother. So what came after this, man? Uh, we had the Balor Nakamura video, the hype video, where people were talking about this potential matchup, and it's going to be happening next week, so they picked a really good week to actually put on a really, really well done hype video because it got me hype. Uh, we got Triple H talking about it, Ty Dillinger, Jordan and Gable, Neville, and then, of course, we also got Nakamura and Balor themselves talking about it as well. Yeah, I just loved it. Again, it was kind of hammering home some things that we already knew. Their closeness, how they're two world-class athletes. You've got Jordan and Gable almost serving as kind of our voice in the sense that, man, it's just going to be great to sit back and watch this match. It was really well done. I, I feel like it was more emotional. Honestly, for me, it was more emotionally resonant than the two intimate interviews they did with Nakamura and Balor. Because I'm like, well, oh, didn't man, they use funny. clips from that interview from those interviews in this they did. package? Yeah, 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 they did. And I feel like that that really made it more effective and really enhanced the piece. Uh, so yeah, I totally approve of this. I thought it was a great promotional tool. And now next week's the week. You know, we're gonna see it. Bauer Nakamura. Here we go. And funny enough, on that same show, not to jump the gun or anything, but it was announced that Samoa Joe is going to be returning that same week. So it's like all the pieces are falling into place yeah. if we're going to do Nakamura Joe. So there oh, you go. Oh, man. I, I can't believe we're actually doing that. Like, I, I thought for sure that Nakamura would have been called up so much sooner. I know. Dude. His time will come, and I just hope that he'd be used properly. That's Yeah, that's definitely – well, we hope that he'd be called up early, and that didn't happen. So hopefully the being used properly wish doesn't get crushed as well. Exactly. So <laughs> – Anything else you want to say about this video package? I don't think so, man. I mean, it was good, and it got me excited for the match, but I don't really have anything else to say that hasn't already been said. All right, let's move on. All right, so up next, we had Andrea DeMarco, and she interviewed American Alpha, and they, you know, it was a quick promo. It wasn't really substantial, but it finished with it. They've never been more ready, willing, and gable, and that's enough to get me excited. Yeah, and they both said it at the same time, which also might be a first, because I know it's always the one that says it or the other, but they both said it, like, simultaneously, and, like, that yeah. just shows you we're in the zone, and I love it. So, and then great stuff. they lost. <laughs> yeah, we'll get to that, though. We'll get to that. Oh, well, I mean, we're going to get to that, that right now, because that's next. Oh, yeah, because I know Rhino didn't even say anything. They tried interviewing him and walked off. Right. So, okay, okay, here's how we're going to do this. <laughs> I want... You to talk about it first, because if I start talking, okay. I will never shut yeah, the fuck up. Yeah, I, I kind of figured that. All right. So, so you go first. <laughs> okay. So uh, I, I loved this match. I thought this was a really, really well done match. I think this was probably the best match that these two teams have had with each other. I'm really debating that, dude, because I'm right there with you, but I'm so debating it's it. It's between yeah, this. So it's really between this and the end, right? Yeah, definitely, definitely. And I think this is better because they teased the the finish that we got at the end, and then they went even further. Right, right. So that that kind of yeah, I think that that's what makes this take the cake for me on that. Uh, it took a really long time to get to our first fall, which makes sense. I mean, I, I prefer that to your th your you know your two out of three falls match where the heels get the first fall really quickly and it forces the baby faces to you know, fight from underneath and have this big comeback and stuff. Right. Like, I mean, that can work in certain contexts, but I definitely feel like this really did call for what we got where, you know, these teams have fought so many times. It's not necessarily easy to get one of them to lose. And we actually, I don't think has Jason Jordan or Chad Gable ever used an ankle lock before. Uh, they did at the end. They both did. Oh, okay. Okay. Oh, that's right. Yeah. At the same time. Right. Right, exactly. Right. Okay, but this time they actually got a submission victory out of it, and it took a while to get there, which I think builds up pretty well, and then that kind of felt like your first crescendo. But then what I really like even more than the, the ankle lock finish there was the inverted figure four that Dawson got Jason Jordan to tap out with because they had actually been working on his leg earlier in the match. Right, right. 
So that I really liked. And then, of course, we also had, you know, later on, we had the, the multiple false finish opportunities where Jordan does the spear into the corner, tags Gable in, and then he goes to throw, I think it was Dawson, up for, what's their finisher maneuver? Uh, the Shatter Machine? Or, or are you oh. talking about American Alpha? Because that's Grand Amplitude. Grand Amplitude, yeah. He throws him up for Grand Amplitude. Dawson, or that was Dawson that he got thrown up. And then Dash comes in for the save. You know, and then he kind of sets Dawson down in front of him. And they go for the Shatter Machine. And then Gable shoves Dash out of the way. And, the, like, that whole sequence was awesome. I loved that because that really did play on the finish at the end really, really well. And then your finish comes when you had, I, th- I want to say it was Dash. Yeah, or no, it was Dawson. It was Dawson on the outside. It looked like Gable was going to give him a, a German suplex into the barricade, which, I mean, would have killed him, basically. And Dash comes over, makes the save, and they do the shatter machine on the apron on the outside. And then they roll Gable back into the ring. And Scott Dawson being the brilliant ring mechanic with amazing awareness that he is make sure that no limbs are under the rope and pins Chad Gable for the three count. Awesome. Okay. Cause I have a lot to say. Did I say, uh, did I, did I, is there anything that you have left to say that I didn't already say? Because that's amazing. If so, I feel like I, I mean, everything. I mean, I mean, first of all, ditto everything you just said. Um, Secondly, I tried to be as thorough as possible to give you a real challenge. <laughs> well, see, here's the thing. For me, it's just going to be my Mark Splooge all over the place. Even if it's okay. not na- naming particulars, I'm still going to oh. have, you know, my, my freaking uh, Mark out here. Right. Um, one thing I loved when he got him back in like that inverted figure four, Jason Jordan, Chad Gable broke it up with a flying headbutt. That was sick. Like, screw just walking over and stomping on a guy. I'm going to soar through the air like a boss. Um... I love, and I cannot stress this enough, oh my god, people, I love that the authors of Pain did not get involved. Because I, I had a sneaking feeling, but I one thing tell I... tell you, though, I'm glad they didn't get involved, but I wish they would have attacked both teams after the match was over. And I will agree with you there, I will wholeheartedly agree with you there, because I feel like that would have been great heel heat, you know, to kind of make that disruption in the aftermath of a great match. Um, so I love that they didn't interfere though. And one thing I have to commend NXT for, it seems like feuds like this, they always let have a clean sense of finality. You know, it's yeah. not tainted or anything like that because you're talking about four amazing athletes like Jordan and Gable. I feel like are a love letter to my childhood of the Ben and the ruthless aggression, uh, era years, uh, the revival, the more I think about it, I think these guys were a precursor to what would become my love, especially, you know, very recently of guys like Marty Skrull, guys that just pick apart a body part or work you over with holds and, and just enjoy themselves while doing it. And the crazy thing, and I'll tell you guys this right now, uh, already two of my awards, I know sometimes Ashton on Twitter, I'll say all the, like the awards already that he's got down on lock for me. American Alpha and the Revival is my feud of the year. Not even close. Not even close. And as far as tag team of the year, it really does come down to those two teams. But honestly, I may even have to give it to the Revival. They are looking like one of the best tag teams in the game right now with how they work together. I mean, they take tag team fundamentals to another freaking level. Just amazing the tags they take and and how they're able to use like blind spots. So the ref can't see us. Let's just club him on both sides to, you know, oh, let's do a shatter machine on the fucking apron. Like these guys, I really, and I love American Alpha to death. Please, people, I would give like a right arm and a, you know, left leg for these guys here. But the revival has got Edward. Yeah, really. Uh, The revival are easily, to me, the best tag team, not only in the WWE, but possibly in the wrestling world at the moment because they are so good. So freaking good. Next level. Um, Like you said, you mentioned all of the amazing spots in this match. I loved when we got the first fall with the the tap-out spot that Chad Gable did an ankle lock on the outside. So they both still did simultaneous ankle locks, but it was, like, in such different positioning. Like, I love that. Well, and it was brilliant, too, because uh, Dash and Dawson had each other's hands locked, and I think it was... who? Do you remember who it was that tapped out? 
I believe it was Dawson because yeah. Dawson was still in the ring. And da- Dash was he had grabbed Dawson's hands and was trying to pull him to the rope. And that was in Gable went out to the outside and, and locked the ankle lock on Dash. Yeah, and that and that's another, like, uh, two more points I want to say, and then honestly I'm going to wrap it up. Otherwise, we will be here all night for me gushing over this match. One, I loved that the bulk of the falls came by submission because that was quite a distinction from both Dallas and the end, which both ended by pinfall. Yeah. And that leads me to my final point. Why this is my feud of the year, people ultimately won. Yes, it's incredibly biased. I love both teams and American Alpha for life. But more importantly than that, and more objectively than that, where this feud succeeds, none of these matches, in my mind at least, ever ran into each other. They all did an excellent job distinguishing themselves from one another. And that, to me, is unheard of. Like, I know it's possible. I'm sure Luke Underground's done it. I'm sure other places have done it. But in WWE, I almost feel like that's a rarity. And these guys really achieve something. To have three distinct matches, each one better than the last, because I may have to agree with you that this even topped the end, but it's so freaking close. Like, these guys are incredible. And I, I will never say enough what they've done for those NXT Tag Team titles and what they've done for Tag Team Wrestling on the whole for WWE absolutely outstanding well, for nxt for nxt but you know what like when they come up if they both come up you know i would hope that the revival wouldn't be like the vaude villains and be only like a full sale kind of thing and where they peak I-, I could see these guys doing a similar thing on the main roster like it's just made people take note oh my god tag team wrestling doesn't have to be boring or by the numbers it could be some of the most exhilarating stuff you ever watch and yeah, I mean, not since the Shield, I think, have we ever really felt that way in WWE. And yeah. here these two guys come along, and we're like, okay, we may not be as good as the Shield, but we don't have to be because we're the revival in American fucking Alpha, and we're just gonna do it. I love it, dude. I love everything about it. Now, my only question I have for you, because I can't even think right now, I am running on such a high. Who comes next? Is it uh, Gargano and Champa? Oh, there's a pain, TM61. Who are the next number one contenders in your mind? Ooh, well, considering the Revival still have the titles, I think Gargano and Champa have to be the number one contenders right now. Right, I would completely agree with you there. And I'm assuming then that while that's going on, we'll also be getting uh, Jordan and Gable versus the Authors of Pain, which the Authors of Pain will win and become the new number one contenders. Right, right. So that's my foresight for the tag division right now. I honestly completely agree with that assessment to the letter. With that said, I don't think there's anything you have to say about the main event. I got everything out that I needed to. Feud of the year, people. You heard it here first from me. My feud of the year, easily American Alpha versus The Revival. So, with that said, let's get into our next segment. High spots and low shots. Oh, man. You know what? I'm going to say my low shot's Alexa Bliss. Because she really takes it to Bailey, and yet Bailey just pops up. Bailey to belly, and it's over. So, yeah, Alexa Bliss, I know she was wanting to get in the NXT Women's Championship picture. She still can, but it's not, right now isn't going to be her time. And so, yeah, she's my low shot. All right, yeah. It makes a lot of sense. Uh, my low shot is a three-way tie. Okay. Wesley Blake, Zack Ryder, and Mojo Rawley. Oh, nice, dude. Nice. You all got gored, and more importantly, you all got left in the dust. Yeah, man. Great. By Murphy, who's going to go on to have a more successful career than any of you. Yeah, I like that confidence, brother. I love it. Suck it, Ryder. (laughs) Zack Ryder. Fuck him. <laughs> I knew you were going to do it. You still got me, damn it. I'm, yes, yes. Uh, <laughs> high spot, honestly, dude, I'm such a fucking scroll girl for these people. I want to give it to that main event, but I know I can't. I have to be no, fair. No, you can, you can. Then I give it to the main event. Like, as you said, I could. I'm not going to look a gift horse in the mouth. That main event is my fucking high spot. Fuck everything else. Yes, that includes Bailey Verb, but it's like, but what about hugging? Screw hugging. Belly to belly suplexes all day. All day. Well. God, I'm turned up right now. I want I mean, to punch that is something kind in of, the face. That is kind of her finisher. Is it? Is it? Yeah. Get in the back of the freaking line with your headbands. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Sorry. Bailey didn't do anything wrong. I'm, I'm really feeling very primal and very aggressive right now. I just want to hurt something in a good way. Let me put something in a leg lock. Yeah! 
turned up. So who's your high spot while I'm coming off the high? Well, I mean, I already had a low shot involving this match, so I might as well make it my high spot as well, Murphy, for surviving and getting a singles push. <laughs> Murphy, because fuck you guys, I'm out. <laughs> yep. Oh, that's so good, dude. I love it. I love everything about that. I, love I can't the- wait to read about how Ecstasy doesn't get why we like Murphy so much. Yeah, he he left, and he only did good here, and like, no, no, he's going to be amazing, because he is amazing, and I'm telling you. Yeah, it's called have... prior experience. When he was Matt Silva in Australia, he was an amazing badass, and he could be that in WWE, too, if they let him. If they let him, that's the operative term. It's not on Murphy, because he's already packing the ability. It's on them for letting him show it, and I hope exactly. they do. Yeah, I feel like that's like 99% of the reason we are fans of people, because they're, oh, I don't know, talented. <laughs> Thanks! Uh, so now, I feel so good about myself right now. So with that all established, my mind is going places. Do you have anything else you want to say? No. All right, and guys, that whatever. Ponderous pause, though. I know, right? And I just want to let everybody know: if you do happen to disagree with our assessment of Buddy Murphy, it's irrelevant. Like our new T-shirt. Buy it on Teespring. I have been given marketing responsibilities. Make me look good, people. Make me make you look good. Get that It's Irrelevant t-shirt so you can show apathy in the face of the Roman Empire and everything else in your life, except for American Alpha, The Revival, Lucha Underground, and anything else that's amazing, because then we might have problems. But still, get the t-shirt. It's going to look amazing on you. So with that said... And I've told John that if we sell two or more of these t-shirts, he's getting marketing responsibility for every shirt we try and sell from here on out. I have responsibilities, people. You have no idea how big this is. I thought I was just going to spend all the time in the closet and come out for recordings. I have responsibilities now. I could be promoted. Help me help you help me. So get it done. I believe in you, and I believe in me. So with that said, this has been NXT. This has been TwitWow. Wait for it. Wait for it. The best. Good Lord. Wrestling podcast made for wrestling fans by wrestling fans on the web today. Oh, my God. This coke. Oh, my God. Yes. Yeah. None of you guys bought that shirt, though, dick. Yeah. Where is that, huh? You say it with me. I know you do. Don't lie to yourself about it. I know you know. But you can I know who t- bought the shirt. I know there are three <laughs> people that bought the shirt, and I knew all three of them were going to buy the shirt before I even put it up. None of you guys bought the shirt. What are you doing to me? <laughs> Twitwell fans, we coming for you. No, no, no. FCC regulations. No, no. But. Oh, bitch, please. This is, dude, nothing's regulated here. <laughs> But you can make it up to me, and I know you want to because you love me, or at least I tell myself that every night, by commenting and subscribing on YouTube. As to, as to what question do you have for our subscribers this week? Who's winning next week, Nakamura or Balor? Yeah, place your bets, people. I'm thinking no, seriously, there. I'll play bookie. You place bets. Right now, the odds are three to one in Nakamura's favor. You're damn right they are. Give us all your money. So, yeah, who's going to win next week, Nakamura or Balor? Guys, you already know what to subscribe to and what to check out, and thank Christ for that, for the mood I'm in. It's all in the amazing background that Ashton here made. And we will see you again. I I don't think there's anything else besides our Raw review next week, so you guys can check us out there. Oh, and our live reactions to PWG prints are recorded, and I will be putting them up either tomorrow or Friday. And do you know why he's going to do that? Because he has an amazing face. Just amazing. So, you can expect PWG Prince live reactions. And then after that, our Monday Night Raw review, which, if I'm really this turned up right now, I couldn't think of a better thing to help me crash. So, until (laughs) then, tune in and peace out. Luckily, there's a smaller gap between Raw and the good stuff than there is between the good stuff and Raw. You're damn right, brother.